Today is Monday Thursday and we begin this sermon looking at the theme that Jesus gives his disciples a new commandment and institutes the Lord's Supper. All of you are in lockdown and are sitting in your homes and listening to the sermon. We've done almost 14 days being at home. And now we come on to the last week where we have to be inside our homes and not being able to meet together as the body of Christ to celebrate this very important evening, Monday Thursday, when Jesus met with his disciples and had his last supper with them and instituted the Lord's Supper or the Holy Eucharist. And we know that Jesus and his disciples were celebrating the Passover meal in remembrance of their deliverance from bondage in Egypt. And so, you know, the people remembered, sort of really lived out their experience in Egypt when they were asked to slaughter a lamb and they were asked to put the blood of the lamb on the doppos so that when the angel of death passed over, they would leave all the Israelite firstborn alive. And therefore we see that it is the Passover meal that they are celebrating. But also in the midst of this Passover meal, we see two other meals that are running concurrently. So altogether three meals that are running together. On one side is the Passover meal. On the other side, this is Jesus' last supper or his farewell meal with his disciples because he knows that this is the last time that he's going to eat with them. And this was the dinner that he was going to have with them after which he was going to be arrested. And we know how they went into the Garden of Gethsemane where Judas came and betrayed him and then he was arrested and then taken to the Jewish trial and the Roman trial, and then how he was crucified. But in the midst of all this, we see that Jesus establishes a new supper called the Lord's Supper. And what did Jesus do? Jesus took the bread, broke it, and said, This is my body which is given for you. And after supper, he took the cup, and he said, This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. We call this day Monday Thursday from the Latin word mandatum, which means a mandate or a new commandment. And the new commandment that Jesus gave for his disciples is to love one another so that others would know that they were his disciples. This evening we will be looking at John's Gospel, chapter 6, verses 35 onwards. Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe all those the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all those he has given me, but raise them up on the last day. Jesus is teaching his disciples that he is the bread of life. And this is one of the I am sayings in John's gospel. One of the radical claims of Jesus. And he says, whoever comes to him will never go hungry. And whoever believes in him will never be thirsty. Now what does Jesus mean when he says, I am the bread of life? Jesus shows that he is the one who can nourish us spiritually. And that we will never hunger and thirst for spiritual experiences when we come to him. Very often we see people coming from other parts of the world to India in order to have some spiritual experience. 
they would go and sit under some guru of their wanting experience and what jesus is telling us here is that he is the one who will give us this ultimate spiritual experiences we will never hunger and thirst for any more spiritual experiences when we come to him and the disciples still had an understood what jesus said when he said i am the bread of life jesus had just finished feeding the 5000 men with five loaves of bread and two fishes and the disciples had an understood what he did and jesus tells his followers that they had chosen to come after him because their stomachs were being filled and so jesus tells them do not work for food that spoils but for food that endures and then they ask jesus what work should they do and jesus says the work of god is this to believe in the one whom he has sent and then the people ask him for a sign to prove that he was indeed the messiah and the people say look moses gave us a sign by giving bread in the wilderness and jesus then reminds them and says that it was not moses who gave them their ancestors gave their ancestors food but it was his father who was in heaven and jesus said that the bread of god is that which comes down from heaven and he was referring to himself as the bread would come down from heaven and the people say sir give us this bread and it is in this context that jesus says i am the bread of life in the passover meal which jesus was having with his disciples he reminds them that this is the last meal or the last supper that he would be having with his disciples and in the midst of that he has instituted the lord's supper he tells them this is my body which is broken for you just before going to the cross taking the cup he institutes the cup and he says this is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins and so we see jesus offering himself as the passover lamb just like the blood of the lamb was smeared on the doorposts in the old testament and the angel of death passed over the blood of jesus the lamb offers us this forgiveness Jesus interposes himself to redeem his people from their bondage to sin just as the passover lamb was interposed to redeem the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt Jesus tells them that in spite of the people seeing him do all the mighty miracles to heal the sick and raise the dead they still were not ready to believe and were asking for a sign Jesus tells them that the father will give to him who will come to him and he will not drive any any of them away and he says i have come not to do my will but to do the will of him who sent me and this is the will of the one who sent me that i should lose none of those he has given me but raise them up at the last day and so the very purpose of jesus giving us this last supper the lord supper or the holy eucharist is to remind us that this is for our forgiveness this is my body given for you do this in remembrance of me and bread is symbol of food symbol of sustenance symbol of spiritual food bread is also a symbol of god's gift and so christ himself blesses god for the bread and he says which is given for you a prophetic utterance about his imminent death and jesus himself speaks in sacrificial forms he is the true passover lamb offered once and for all for all the sins of the whole world and further on in verse 47 of john 6 he says very truly i tell you the one who believes has eternal life 
I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But the, here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the world. It's quite clear that the words of int institution uses clear sacrificial language. Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper as he took the bread and the cup and gave it to them, saying, Eat and drink, all of you. This is my body which is given for you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. John 6.47 reminds us, that the way to eternal life is to believe in him. The eternal life begins here and now and is not some esoteric life that we need to wait for. Jesus gives us life abundant here and life eternal in the world to come. The disciples were to do this in remembrance of him. Jesus was the true bread, the true spiritual sustainer who came down from the Father, who came down from heaven. And if anyone partook of this bread, they would live forever. In other words, Jesus was saying that if we appropriate his death on the cross for ourselves and see him as the one who sustains us, then we will live forever. We will be spiritually nourished through Jesus. Jesus also identifies his blood with the institution of the new covenant. In the old covenant we see at Mount Sinai when blood was splashed on the people, when the Ten Commandments were given, and the covenant, the Sinaitic covenant or the Mosaic covenant was sealed with a sprinkling of the blood. But we know that the people broke that covenant very soon. But Jeremiah said that there is a time coming in the future I will put my law in their hearts, in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No long will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Three clear things stand out about the new covenant. Jeremiah prophesied about it. Over 700 years, 700 years before Christ came. But we see here that the law will become internal. It will be written on our hearts and minds. And that happens when the Holy Spirit is given from the day of Pentecost until today. And secondly, knowledge of God will be universal. It will not be located in Jerusalem alone. And today we know that the church is a universal church. The world around today is celebrating Monday Thursday. And thirdly, we know that forgiveness of sins will be complete. Earlier on, they had to keep on offering sacrifices. But now, Jesus has offered himself as a full and final sacrifice, once and for all. So how do we approach the Lord's table? How do we come before the Lord's table? How do we prepare for it? A friend of mine called Jim Hurst, suggests four ways, five ways in which we can come close to him. First of all, he says, communion calls us to look back and remember. It calls us to look back and remember. We are to look at the cross. We are to remember what he did for us. So every time we come to the Lord's table, we are to bring back to mind by an effort to bear in mind, to not forget. So one of the main functions of, of the Lord's Supper is to call to mind the historical person and work of Jesus, and particularly his work on the cross. Christianity is rooted in historical events. The New Testament record of the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ 
is not a myth or a legend. These were writers who were eyewitnesses, who had seen the things that they had reported. So we are called to look back and remember on what Christ has done. Secondly, he reminds us that we are to look up and receive. We are to look up to the Lord. God lives with us in the present. God's name is not I was, but I am. Jesus Christ is alive. He has accomplished in his death and resurrection 2,000 years ago all that was needed for our salvation. But he is here alive today. And that's why Jesus says, I am the bread of life. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. There's a continuity of staying in him. Jesus' disciples were quite surprised and confused when they heard these words. Because they were not able to understand what Jesus was saying. Jesus is drawing parallels between physical realities and spiritual realities. To partake of his flesh and blood is to partake of the present provision that a sacrifice provides. Just as one must continuously take physical food in order to be nourished, we are to continually receive the Lord's Supper so that we may spiritually be nourished. And as we come to the Lord's table, as we look up to the Lord, what we receive is the provisions that he makes. Provision of forgiveness, provision of strength, removal of guilt, grace, encouragement, healing, everything that we need in the present, the Lord's table provides for us. So therefore we are to look up to God and to receive. First of all, look back and remember. Then we are to look up and to receive. Thirdly, we are to look within ourselves. We are to introspect. We are to reflect. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11, 28, that a person ought to examine themselves before they come to eat the bread or drink the cup. And therefore we need to see, introspect our own lives, see where we've fallen short of God's standards and ask Him for strength in our weaknesses, that his strength would be made perfect. And whenever we come to the communion table, it's a time to pause and reflect upon our own inner condition and remove all those that hinders our relationship with God. John writing in his letter, 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and he will forgive us of all our unrighteousness, forgive us all our sins and cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. The psalmist says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And that's an excellent prayer to pray when we approach the Lord's table. So that's the third thing we need to do. Look within us. We are to look back and remember. We are to look up and receive the gifts that he gives us. Forgiveness, healing, grace, encouragement and so on. And then we are to look within ourselves. Confess our sins as we prepare to come to the Lord's table to receive his forgiveness. Fourthly, we are called to look around. We are called to look around and reaffirm one another. Communion challenges us to reaffirm our unity with other believers in the body of Christ. St. Paul admonished the church at Corinth. In the first place, I hear when you come together as a church, there are divisions among you. When you come together, it's not the Lord's Supper you eat. For as you eat, each of you goes ahead without waiting for anybody else. One remains hungry, another gets drunk. And these were problems in the church. The reason Paul wrote the letter was that the Corinthians were having these problems. The problem of disunity, division. The church was divided over differences of theology, differences of giftedness and style, 
differences of social rank, differences of racial and cultural heritage, very much like the church of today. Divisions within the church, conflicts within the church, groupism within the church. And as the people in Corinth gathered together for the communion, all these things showed through. But we see here that the very root of the word communion is to share in common. We share a common loaf and a cup. If the communion celebration is supposed to be a symbol and witness of Christian unity, then we are to be united. We are to be one. We are to remember that the Lord's table unites us as Christians. And it's a time for us to reflect on our relationships within the body of Christ. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar there, remember and there remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. When our relationships are right with our Christian brothers and sisters, then the communion we celebrate is communion indeed and not an act of public hypocrisy. And therefore when we come to the Lord's table, we are called to think, do we harbor resentment in our heart towards anyone? Is there anyone from whom we would withhold the forgiveness and grace which we ourselves want to receive? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Finally, communion calls us to look ahead and rejoice. I tell you, said Jesus to his disciples that night, I will not drink of this fruit of the wine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. And therefore we see, we are looking forward to the coming kingdom. Paul says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. And communion calls this future to mind. And so this evening, as we listen to the sermon in our own homes, going through difficult times, not being able to come together as the body of Christ, we are called to remember what Christ did for us. We are called to look up and receive from him the good gifts, particularly of forgiveness, of removal of our guilt, strength, grace, encouragement, the removal of our fear in the context of this coronavirus, where many of us are anxious and scared, and the table offers us that reassurance. Communion also calls us to introspect whether we are right with God. We also are called to pray, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Communion calls us to look around and reaffirm one another. We are the body. And if there are differences, if we haven't forgiven somebody, that's the time, this is the time to call to mind and forgive that person. And finally, communion calls us to look ahead and rejoice. Jesus will come back again. Jesus came, Jesus died, Jesus rose again, Jesus will come back again. And therefore communion helps us to prepare for that final banquet where we will be with the Lord Jesus. May God bless each one of you on this Monday Thursday as we meditate in our homes. May God truly draw us unto himself. Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for the institution of the Lord's Supper. And Lord, even though we are not able to physically celebrate it in church, we know that you paid the price for the penalty of our sins on the cross. Help us to look back and remember what you've done for us. Help us to look up to you and to receive the forgiveness, the assurance, the strength, the courage, the confidence, to know that we are forgiven and that you are a God who removes our fears and fills us with your confidence. Help us, Lord, to introspect and see hindrances in our lives, stumbling blocks in our lives that prevent us from coming close to you.
enable us lord to love others especially within the body of christ that we will not harbor any resentment or bitterness in our lives and help us father finally to look forward to the eschatological kingdom when you will come back as king to take us back to be with yourself this we pray in jesus name amen